What's going on everybody? Haunted Beard here. Welcome back to my coverage of Shudder's 61 Days of Halloween. Today I'm talking about the latest release from Dario Argento, Dark Glasses. Now, if you're a horror fan, you've probably heard the name Dario Argento, Italian film director, has been making movies for a really long time. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call myself like a big fan of his. I am, however, a big fan of his film Suspiria. I've seen of a few of his other movies. I'm, I'm kind of a bit mixed on those. So didn't have super high hopes, but uh, was curious. This is his first film in 10 years. So this is what we got. Dark Glasses. Here we go. Let's get into it. So Dark Glasses tells the story of Diana, a young woman who loses her sight and finds a guide in a Chinese boy named Chin. Together they will track down a dangerous killer through the darkness of Italy. So the score for this movie is pretty solid. If you're at all familiar with Argento's work, you know he has kind of a similar style uh, music that accompanies his films, at least from the ones I've seen anyways. And this is no exception. So if you like his movies for the music, you're definitely going to like the score here. It is loud and just, you know, bold <laughs> and in your face. And it definitely has that kind of, you know, I guess really sort of giallo type feel that we've um, kind of been accustomed to with his movies. Unfortunately, that is really about the only praise that I can give this thing because the rest of this thing just did not really work for me at all. The vast majority of this thing just comes across as totally flat and, and really kind of clunky too, just in terms of some of the editing and just the attempts at horror and to try to scare us are they're just not really very effective and like I said clunky and there's a sequence of events in this movie that is just kind of crazy where our lead Diane goes and visits the young boy Chin who is now an orphan uh, because of the accident that happens it kills his parents which leads to her blindness and so she goes to this kind of like boys home school or something like that where he's at and she wants to, you know, talk to him and apologize. Well, he hates her. Uh, and then all of a sudden he escapes and he likes her and wants to live with her. And so she takes him into her house and they become friends. And then all of a sudden she's calling the school to say he escaped. Would you come get him? And he overhears her on the, com on the phone conversation and he picks up a knife and threatens to kill himself. And it's just like all this crazy stuff happens in like literally two minutes. It's just, it's all over the place. And so it just comes across as just, like I said, really clunky and, and just weird. There's just some pretty typical stuff here that you've seen in pretty much every subpar horror movie where there's just some bad edits regarding some of the kills. There's some really poor and stupid character decisions. They, they make another decision too to reveal the face of the killer about halfway through the movie. Uh, which is just weird because it's like they've they've gone to like deliberate lengths to hide the identity up until that point and then they just like show his face and it's just it's such an odd choice that I don't really understand and again unfortunately nothing about this really just sticks out and is memorable or is effective and I don't really know like what Argento was kind of trying to do here like was he trying to scare us because it's not scary was he trying to disturb us because it's not really disturbing. The kills are pretty tame. I will give it maybe a little bit of credit, though. The, the first kill in the movie is, is pretty decent, and you get some, some good blood. Uh, but other than that, though, there's really nothing there. Is he you know, trying to give us a compelling mystery? Because there's not really any mystery to it. Um, you know, is he trying to you know, build suspense and keep us on the edge of our seat? Well, there's not really any suspense in here either. And so... It's it's just pretty ineffective and unmemorable overall. There's another scene later on in the movie that I can't help but talk about where Diana and the boy are running away from the killer and they're in this water and they get attacked by these water snakes. And it's it's just such a poorly handled scene. It's just it's so bizarre. Like she's just standing there in the water and like they're not doing anything. They're just like letting these snakes attack them and none of them actually get bit though. They're just like kind of swimming around and like wrapping themselves around them and like I know she's blind but like he's supposed to be her guide and like they just stop moving when the snakes come. They, there's like no attempt to escape and then like all of a sudden there's a snake that's like wrapped around her neck. It's like how did it get up out of the water all the way up to her neck? Uh, it, it's just really poorly done. 
uh, you finally get to the ending of the movie, and I won't spoil it or anything, but when you finally figure out why the killer chose her as his next victim is just <laughs> kind of laughably bad. It's just ridiculous. And then uh, the, the whole climax of the movie is just very anticlimactic and just not really satisfying at all. So, uh, look, there's there's really not a whole lot more I can say about this or really even feel like I need to say. Like I said, outside of the score, there's just not really anything here that I will remember for more than a couple hours. So, with that being said, uh, overall, my grade, uh, I'm going to give it like a 3 out of 10 for Dark Glasses. Uh, so unfortunately that's just the way it goes sometimes. That's all I got. Up next is actually the last film, uh, at least for the Shudder original releases on the 61 Days of Halloween, and that is the one I've been anticipating the most, VHS 99. Yes, uh, I can't wait for it. That's coming up next week. And uh, yeah, I will see you then for VHS 99 on The Haunted Beard.